Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal bringing this video on a uh, typical Friday here in Jerusalem. The hour went back in Israel last Sunday, so that means that because Jerusalem is a city that pretty much functions according to the Shabbat, Shabbat's going to come in early now, so places close in the winter time for Shabbat. Once the hour goes back at like literally one o'clock, you're trying to do groceries, you're trying to get food, and it becomes really difficult. So we went on a bit of a crawl around the city, my wife and I trying to find somewhere. We eventually found this place called Hashemain. It's one of the most famous of the various warmer places in the city. And this is pretty much what a typical uh, falafel joint looks like in Israel. I thought I'd record it. You go up to the uh, you know glass place where the guys bring the ingredients together and you tell them what they want. There's a choice of sauces, typically tahini, which is sesame seed sauce, amba, which is uh, a kind of fenugreek and mango sauce, super, super delicious. And then you put it together all in front of you, tell them what the guy wants. My wife went for a shawarma in salad, which is one of the options. You can also get your shawarma on a plate, or you can get shawarma in pita, uh, or lafa. Lafa is also called in Hebrew eshtanur, and it's like kind of a flat bread. So it's a bigger portion size, it typically costs a little bit more. So this is uh, hashemain, I'm gonna tuck into some food now, and uh, show you guys some of the ingredients if you wanna order your own falafel in Hebrew. What's up friends, you've made it to the Falafel Olpan 101, the key vocab you need to order falafel in Hebrew, which is one of the first things you need to know how to do in Israel, because once you know how to order falafel and beer, you're basically set to start off life in Israel. Sort of half kidding. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to give you guys the words for offering, for ordering the kind of typical toppings that you can get at one of these falafel places, like Hashamein, where I ordered food today. Bearing in mind, of course, that no two falafel places tend to offer the exact same set of toppings. It's kind of idiosyncratic, often influenced by where the owners are from. So a Yemenite owner might have slightly different toppings than a Ashkenazi Jewish owner. But there are some staples that you're going to probably be able to find in pretty much any falafel place you go to whether you're ordering falafel or shawarma or sabih now just one point before we get into the vocab kosher or kashrut in israel there's kind of three different classifications within kosher a place can be basari which means that it's serving meat products a place can be halavi which means it's serving dairy products or a place can be parv which is um, serving neither meat nor dairy so not every falafel place will serve shawarma because that would make it a meat thing so you're going to find falafel places that only do falafel and then places that do shawarma and falafel and the reason for all this is that um in kashrut or the laws of kosher jews can't eat milk and meat together or in very close succession to one another okay let's start off with sauces four classic sauces that you're going to see at these places firstly is hummus now, I tend to pronounce my Hebrew in a kind of more Mizrahi style, so I'm going to force myself to be ugh, guttural for the sake of this video. Most Israelis will pronounce it hummus with a guttural chet sound. So there's hummus, which is the first. Hummus is a chickpea spread, famous worldwide now, probably doesn't need an introduction. Second thing you're going to find at these places all the time is tahini. Tahini means sesame seed paste. And again, it's probably better to pronounce it tahini or tahina, unless you see that the owner is from an Arab-speaking country, and then he's probably going to love your uh, Mizrahi accent. Okay, next one is amba. Now, amba is probably less famous outside of Israel, the Middle East, the Arab world. It is fenugreek and mango spread. If you've never had it, just wait till you have it. You're probably going to smell of it for days, but it's uh, super delicious. And it came to Israel, to the best of my knowledge, was popularized by the cooking of Iraqi um, Jews because they use it big in their cuisine. Finally, we have harif or harif. So harif is hot sauce. And when you order harif in an Israeli hummus or falafel place, you're going to be typically getting something like tzrug, which is like the hot sauce dish popular among Yemenite Jews. I have to make a couple of notes here regarding eating falafel in um, non-kosher places like in East Jerusalem, Palestinian East Jerusalem or Palestinian parts. There are some slight differences. The hot sauce in Arabic is pronounced shata. And shata is slightly different than shug. I'm personally, or what Israelis called harif, I'm personally a, a huge fan of shata. It's popular in Saudi Arabia particularly. All right then, let's get into the salads. So firstly, we're going to have agvaniot. Agvaniot is uh, tomatoes, usually finely chopped tomatoes of the kind you saw in this video. Then we're going to have malfafon. Malfafon is... Um, 
cucumbers. I was blanking on the English word for a second there. Usually these are separated because not everyone digs either tomato or cucumber, but sometimes you will see them mixed together. If they're mixed together, you can just ask for salat. Salat means salad, and unqualified, it's usually understood to mean the classical, basic Israeli salad, or also sometimes called Arab salad, depending on where your political leanings are. And a basic Israeli salad is just tomato, cucumbers, and sometimes a little bit of lemon mixed together. Next one we have here is chamutzim. Chamutzim is, uh, it means pickles, and it's typically pickled cucumbers. Now, this is an interesting one because it definitely lends a bit of a tangy, lends a bit of a tangy quality to your falafel. Some people love it, some people don't. It's probably one of the more divisive falafel ingredients to the extent that falafel additions can be divisive. Next, we have uh, salat turki. Salat turki means, in English, Turkish salad. And what it typically is in Israel is sort of a tomato based, a bit of onions going on, a little bit of tamarind as well for that, again, slight tanginess, and sometimes a small bit of paprika, a kind of not hot pepper. And it's uh, super delicious. Uh, this is one you won't see everywhere. They didn't have it at Hashemain today. So again, there's slight variations and that's what makes each falafel stand slightly different than the next one. All right, let's keep going. Next thing you're going to find at most of these places is Kruv Lavan. Kruv, kruv means cabbage and lavan means white so kruv lavan means white cabbage it's typically a shredded white cabbage of the sort you saw here next let's get into onions batsal is how you say onion in hebrew unqualified unqualified at a falafel place it typically just means raw white onions then it's also very common to have batsal metugan Batsal metugan means fried onion, and it's just kind of fried onion. You can see the difference because batsal metugan, obviously it's fried, so it's kind of a little bit brown and caramelized and glistening with oil, and it's definitely fattier than just raw onion, of course. Next one is uh, batsal im sumak. Um, sumak is one of the few words that are exactly the same in Hebrew and English. Sumak is, of course, a spice. Um, I actually think it's a fruit berry, but don't quote me on that. It again ends a kind of lends a kind of zingy, lemony flavor. And batsal and sumak is just um, onions topped off with a bit of sumak. Chasa is lettuce and this actually is not one you're going to see in every single falafel place don't ask me why some places don't offer lettuce and often in these falafel places you'll see that they have a kind of side section which is going to have some cruve levan and um jalapeno peppers you can just kind of put into these little plastic containers to sort of add extra stuff in the next word that's going to be very useful is chips now chips in hebrew because of the way that hebrew is pronounced they tend they pronounce it more like cheeps cheeps and uh, that is chips now some people and sorry for for the americans listening to this if there are any i should say that means fries and not potato chips so fries slash chips uh, are definitely not something everyone loves in their falafel but it is common to roll it in more common i think if you're ordering laffa next one is hatzilim hatzilim or hatzilim is fried eggplant and this is again something super popular in the uh, more sephardic arabic world i think it's delicious but it's very very fatty it's deep fried and the eggplant just mops up an insane quantity of oil so if like me you're trying to keep on a lower fat diet probably don't frequent these falafel places that regularly but if you do the ones to avoid i would say would be the hatzilim and the um Tugan, because those are both kind of saturated in oil um and oh and i want to give you two quick more quick words to help the process kitsat means a little bit and you can combine this with any words and harbe means a lot so kitsat and harbe uh, so you can say for for instance tenli kitsat hamutsim give me a little bit of hamutsim of pickles Tenli harbe harif. Now that literally translates to give me a lot of chili, which in English would probably not be polite to, to speak like that to a server, but Hebrew is a good deal more informal and these things are generally not perceived as being impolite. Or if you want to be extra polite, say bavakisha, which means please, you could say harif bavakisha or harbe harif bavakisha. It's always nice to be polite. Hope this was informative. If you're learning Hebrew, the first thing you need to know is how to order a beer. We'll do that another day and how to order falafel with lots of delicious toppings. If you do want to get more videos about topics like this, living in Israel and, uh, you know, whatever else I talk about, do consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching another video.